let's do some some major takeaways from the Soul series, mm-hmm. okay? Starting with number three, because there were some some big growing pains for Yamamoto. Yes, yes. Number three for me, or number one, however you want to look yeah. at it. We can go in reverse order. Number three is that nerves got the best of yeah. Yoshinobu Yamamoto. And in his MLB debut, $300 million man, most you know, expensive free agent in the his free agent pitcher in the history of baseball comes out amid with with a lot of with a lot of speculation about how he's gonna do after not a great spring training and just a lot of eyes on him because of coming over from MPB and a, a, a big transition. And it didn't go well. Got through one inning. He threw one inning, gave up five earned runs, walked one, struck out two. And is now after one start sitting with an ERA of 45, which is never what you want to lay your lay your no. head down on pillow at night no, thinking, no, no. "Dang, I got a 45 ERA. That's not great." And it's not great. But it was so clear to me that, and I think everyone listening and watching right now can relate to. Of course he's nervous. Of course he's amped up. Of course he's missing spots by a little bit. And that's what we saw. It's not that the stuff isn't good. It's that the the normal, precise Yoshinobu Yamamoto was just a little bit off and missing pitches and getting in trouble with missing those pitches. I mean, you look back to his MPB career, in 118 career NPB starts, he only failed to complete five innings twice. Two times. And in his first Major League Baseball start, it happens. And last year for him, in 171 innings pitched, he only gave up 22 earned runs. He's now given up five earned runs in one inning here in Major League Baseball. So if you are out there overreacting <laughs> to this Yamamoto start, I have some words for you. And those words are shut the hell up. The guy's going to be fine. His stuff is nasty. We're not going to overreact to one start when it's his first start in Major League Baseball amidst all of the transitioning from a new league, amidst all of the nerves of trying to live up to that contract. This is one start. The guy's going to be a stud. Move on. We move on. He'll start again here in just about a week. And even if that doesn't go well, this is a long contract. And he's going to be just fine. We're not overreacting to this start. That's what, listen to what Dontro Willis had to say here. He said, teams are going to be very aggressive because he's around the plate with everything. So he's going to have to change eye level of the hitters and move their feet to make them uncomfortable. First inning is difficult because you have to get settled with your feel and command. And he just wasn't able to do that. No. And I want to remind people, Shohei Otani's first year in Major League Baseball was a struggle on the mound during spring training and right out of the gates. This is normal. This was to be expected. Now, if he had like a lights out game, that would have been shocking. This performance, not that shocking to me. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. That's bottom line. I I knew there was going to be growing pains. I knew there was going to be a bit of a struggle because I saw it firsthand with Shohei Otani when he came over to Major League Baseball. Yeah. So this is very, this is normal. This is on brand for switching leagues, countries, feel, every like everything is different. Yeah. Again, everything. Th- there's no way around it. One inning yes. and five earned runs is a bad start. It's a bad it's start. It's really bad. And really bad would start. Would you expect growing pains throughout the season? Yes. And I said as much. Would you expect them to come this bad in game one of his career in Major League Baseball? No. But again, growing pains are going to happen. He's going to be fine. This is what he said after. Yeah. He said, I wasn't able to execute pitches from the stretch. I know how to fix it, and I'm going to talk to my pitching coaches, which are Mark Pryor and Connor McGinnis, Mm -hmm. and then get myself ready for the next one. Yeah. Great. You know what happened. You know how to fix it. Move on. You were amped up. He wasn't able to channel in that adrenaline. As Adrenaline's a tough, tough Uh thing. You can either really use it to help you, or it can really hurt you on a baseball field, and it hurt him in game one. He really struggled. He got out of that first inning and uh, didn't come back out, and I am excited to watch his next start. Yeah. I mean, he also faced an insane top of the lineup right out of the gate, which leads us to the second takeaway. Padres are pretty good. Alex. Padres are pretty good. Here's here's my second takeaway. Padres might be a playoff team. Yep. They're 
they're good. Yeah. I mean, you you I was watching this lineup. I really believe last year ev- their studs were were dealing with something. Mm-hmm. You know, Xander Bogarts had the wrist and never really looked healthy all year. Manny Machado obviously injured and just Never felt Fernando like Juan Tatis Soto not it, coming out right Tatis out of the gates. Didn't, yeah, didn't yeah. start the team, didn't start the year with the team due to his suspension. So just the vibes were weird. Really then weird. guys get injured and, yeah. and dealing with nagging injuries and just never felt themselves. I watch this Padres lineup right now. I watch Xander Bogarts look like Xander Bogarts. Mm-hmm. The, I would I, the guy's gonna hit 300 this year. I watched Fernando Tatis Jr. hit a ball 117 miles an hour. Woo. I watched Manny Machado hit a ball off the back facing of the stadium for a massive homer. I watched Jackson Merrill hitting in the in the at the bottom of this lineup. Dude, he crushed. So you have depth, you have superstars that mm-hmm. appear healthy, you have a rotation. You Darvish looked Good. Obviously didn't get, I think he threw three and two thirds, but yeah. silenced a, a Dodgers lineup and, and his stuff looked good. You have an, a rotation that just added Dylan Cease, Ooh. who is going to be really, really fun to watch on this team. You have a completely revamped bullpen. Yes, no Josh Hader in the back end, but some arms that really impressed. Some not household names in the bullpen that looked really good. And it's just a revamped bullpen that has some talent my takeaway from watching this series, I, I know we're two games in, but this Padres team might just be a playoff team this year. They are really good and really fun to watch. I hope so, because we had high hopes for them last season. They were, yeah. along with the Mets, I think the biggest disappointment in baseball last year. When you have that much star power, and they still have that much star power, and added even more star power, hopefully, again, it it, it all comes down to the the vibes in the dugout, the clubhouse, yeah. on the field, and it felt like they were having fun, and it felt like they were connected yeah. just in these two games that we saw. Yeah, and and again, they they did lose Juan Soto, and yeah. I'm not discredit. Like, obviously, that's a massive loss. Um, but I just watched this team, and like, if you were to tell me before last year, let's take Juan Soto out of that lineup. Wait, the Padres lineup right now has Tatis, Xander Bogarts, uh-huh. and Manny Machado. Yep, that's. Really good. Fire. And now you add in a, a top prospect in the game of baseball in Merrill who's playing center field. And I was super impressed both games. He didn't get a hit in game one, but put together some really, really good at bats. And then in game two, uh, just kind of broke out onto the scene and looked mm-hmm. really, really good. Um, so yeah, impressed, impressive stuff. Superstars everywhere you look. Yep. They have the makings of a playoff team. They do. All right. And the top takeaway... Man, we've been talking about all day here. Shohei Otani's still really good at baseball. Dude rakes. Yeah. Confirm. Shohei still rakes. Game one goes two for five, steals a bag, drives in a run. Game two for me is honestly where it was even even more impressive. Yeah. There was not a single exit velocity. And this, I will remind everybody in case you didn't hear me at the beginning, game two, a lot of eyes on Shohei. All of the eyes on eyes on Shohei. All of the eyes. Dude comes out, didn't hit a single ball with an exit velocity below 98.5. In fact, three were over 100. He hit three fly balls. This is crazy. He hit three fly balls that totaled 1,114 feet, and they were all outs. He was five feet away from having a couple home runs. Uh, Super impressed with him. Super impressed with his approach, with his ability to to get in the box, especially in game two, and and do what he did. I know the results weren't necessarily there, but again, you can't really you can't control the results. Put the ball hard, hit the ball hard, put it in play. He did that. Um, yeah, Shohei still rakes. It was really fun to watch him. I I, I think the dude could go 40-40 this year. I, I tweeted that. Stole a stole a bag in game one. Uh-huh. Like immediately, like got to first base and then immediately stole yeah. a bag. Yeah, like I, all I within really a minute. do think first because hit, first stolen bag. Because he's not going to pitch this year, I he's think he's going to steal in. more bags. 40-40 season yeah. for Shohei. Thanks for watching. If you love flipping bats, swinging 3-0, or just talking ball, join us. Call us at 213-537-9339 with your questions. We have a weekly guest, and we have a lot of fun, so hit that subscribe button.